I would say if you don't have a passion for children, then pediatrics may not be the right suit for you. Hey guys, oh, welcome back to the channel. Thank you for tuning back in. This is your girl, Nursing Crafts, and we will be discussing pediatric nursing today. Yes, if you are a pediatric nurse or if you are someone who's interested in pediatric nursing and you want to know more, this is the video for you, so stay tuned and stick around for the rest of the video. Well, pediatric nursing is basically the care of patients between the ages of like a few months old to the age of 17, 18. So what to expect when you're working on the pediatric ward? Basically, everything is going to be different. The size of your patients are going to be different. Your calculations or more so the dosage of your medication is going to be completely different. The food that they eat may be different. You know, the personalities are going to be different. So some of the diseases that we typically see would be like bronchopneumonia. So the bronchopneumonia is similar to the RSV virus that was going around a few months ago. Sometimes they require oxygen. Sometimes they require NEBs you know, the, the nebulized Ventolin. We see a lot of asthma and they try not to diagnose asthma while the child is, is very young, but sometimes they call it infantile asthma. Other diagnoses that we would see would be sickle cells. We see a lot of sickle cells on our unit. Cancer, we have a cancer patient on the ward at the moment and it's so sad that these children have to endure these things that you would think only you know adults go through musculoskeletal injuries so they may have broken a leg or we have a patient now who said that her foot just got rolled over and i'm like how she said that she was playing in the road and um i think a teenager a 16 year old was driving a car and ran across her foot or something like that and so things just happen so easily and so we see a variety of diagnoses and so like i said they of course they require medication they require oxygen they require blood transfusions parental infusions platelets whatever it is it's the same thing that you would see or that you would do for an adult but just on a smaller scale but saying that the medications that you would typically see may not be medications that you may see on the adult ward. And so we give a lot of antibiotics. Of course, the dosages are a whole lot less. And so you do your, some, your same calculation, you decide over what you have on hand. There are times when you may have to do a conversion. So that's the main thing that I've noticed with peds and medications, there is a lot of conversions that you have to do integrated in your calculations. And so, like I said, the dosages are minute. <laughs> They're a whole lot less. And so that is something to be mindful of. Vital signs, your vitals are going to be different from that of your adult patients. Now I can count on, or I probably can't even count on my hands, how many times we've had nursing students that would come to the ward they would do their vitals, chart them. And when I look at it, I would be like, hold on, this is what you got for that patient? They'd be like, yeah. And you wrote that down without telling me, one, and without rechecking, two. No, 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 no. Hi guys. <laughs> I know you didn't see that coming. Just popping into the video to remind you guys to like, comment down below and definitely subscribe to the channel. We're trying to build the YouTube family on the road to 500 subscribers. So help your girl out and subscribe to the channel, Nursing Crafts. Now back to the video. Like your respiration and your heart rate would be a whole lot higher than your adult patient. And your blood pressure would be a whole lot less than your adult patient. And so those things, are very important to go over before going to the ward. They are things that you should know before 
you know, you handle your patient because how else are you going to assess your patient and know what is normal from what is abnormal, okay? So with me saying assess, that brings me to the physical assessment part because the vital signs is a part of your physical assessment. There are certain things that you would do that you would not do for your adult and vice versa. So it's very important to basically read, I would say, like go over general stuff, general pediatric notes before going to your unit. Just to have like a, a basic knowledge and a little bit of a head start, I want to say, um, what you're going to encounter or expect, you know, on the unit. Feeds, you're going to be bottle feeding. The parents may be bringing breast milk, whatever the case is. So feeding is going to be completely different from what you would be doing on the adult ward because some of the children don't have teeth yet. Some of them aren't eating real food yet. Some, some children don't eat certain things. They're very picky at this age. And so it's, it's a lot. So you may go to the ward thinking that, okay, I'm going to play with some babies today. I'm going to see all the cute babies today. And mind you, they may be pretty, they may be cute, you know, adorable, whatever you want to call them, but they are sick, okay? They are sick children, so you're not going there to play with the children all day, no. Now, when they start to get better and come around, they tend to be a little bit more playful. When they're sick, all they want to do is sleep. They barely want to eat. <laughs> Don't think it's going to be like daycare. You want to go play with the babies all day because it's, it's not like that all the time. But like I said, when they start to get better, they tend to become a bit more playful and, you know, you start having fun with them. Um, typically, when you're working on the pediatric ward, parents are able to stay, I think, for about maybe 24 hours of the day. Well, here in my hospital, no baby. <laughs> and they're going to be watching and eyeing everything that you do. Um, they're going to be asking questions. And so that is something to be prepared for. And it may come off as them being naggy and annoying or whatever. But, you know, as a parent, they're just concerned for their child, for their baby. Sometimes I have to put myself in the position of a parent to say, okay, well, if it was my child in the hospital and I had a question, you know, I would want the nurse to answer me nicely with a, you know, not necessarily with a smile, but just not in a manner that seems as if she's annoyed. I think you really have to have a passion for children in order to withstand everything. Um, for me, I love, I love kids. I felt like pediatric would have been a good suit for me. And so that's why I chose to go into that area. Like I said, I came from NICU, but this video is all about peds. I think peds, peds can be rewarding. It's good when you can see the children go home and they're well and, you know, they're happy, no longer sick. <laughs> the crying, the crying is a lot. The crying could get to you if you allow it. Now, I don't want to say to ignore the children and have the children crying all day, all shift. No, but sometimes you have to come, you have to become a little immune to it. You want to comfort the child and do things, do whatever you could to stop the child from crying. But sometimes, you know, if the child is in pain, the child in pain, you would have given your meds and done everything you could. And the child may still, you know, be in pain at that current time. And so crying, you may have to endure that. That's what they do, the children, they cry. They're babies, they cry, right? Anything else you wanna know, you can do your own research or ask me down below in the comments. So definitely give this video a thumbs up, leave a comment down below, subscribe to the channel, help me to build my YouTube family. We're on the road to 500 subscribers, so help me to get there and I will thank you for it later. <laughs>